Hello, everyone. You are live with Jonathan Manis, a.k.a. the One Leg Bandit. And, you know, as you travel through life, you never know who you're going to meet. You never know who you're going to run into. But one thing is for absolute certain. Whenever you meet folks, it's not per chance. You know, you you just when you got to take every meeting and just hold it dear. And you never know when you're going to come across people further down the line. So um, today I have a special guest, Michael Wills Parisi. He's a world renowned comedian. And he's spending some time with us to talk about his journey, his past, and what he's going to do in you know moving forward here. So, without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring in Michael. Hey, John. Hey, Jonathan. How you doing, man? How's it going? I'm, I'm doing good. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. You know, um, LinkedIn pleasure. and the world's been rough here lately, and we all need to laugh. And I just wanted to know first and foremost, what's your thoughts on that? You know, how, how do you feel right now? Are you tired of being cooped up? What's going on with you, man? Well, you know, I'm never cooped up. I'm always doing something. You know, we uh, we always have our hustle going on. I, that's why I appreciate what you do, obviously. You know, you're always on top of your game. Uh, I've watched you out there, too. I've seen your videos, and I think you're doing a great thing. You know, I think the world does need comedy, but it always has. Comedy has always been since vaudeville. It's a time that it's a stress reliever. It's a place you can go um, in your head and laugh and forget about all the problems. And, you know... Sometimes when you forget about those problems, you just put them aside and say they really weren't that it wasn't really that worth it to have in my head, you know, so. Uh, oh, my door just opened. <laughs> it's all good. So and just like that, we'll, we'll lead right into the next thing. You know, our meeting was a chance meeting back in the day. I was selling the old business and you come down and checked it out. We ended up not doing that deal, but we got to meet each other and just briefly. And ever since that moment in our lives. I've been following you. And, you know, I was telling you the story, me and my wife sitting in bed and then boom, you pop up on Showtime and you're taking over the world and keep moving forward. And just want to know how's things been since Showtime and, and you know, what's going on with you? Well, you know, I did that Showtime special, the blue show with Dice in two, I think it was like 2015, like five or six years ago. And, uh, you know, prior to that, I did a lot of other shows with him. You know, of course I've been touring the country with him for 30 some odd years. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I'm also in my entrepreneurial world, I like to try different things. And comedy is it always comes back to me no matter what I'm doing. Uh, it'll always come back to me, whether I open up a restaurant or a catering company or, or a comedy, uh, you know, or a comedy club uh, venue that I'm looking to get involved with. Whatever I do, comedy is always there. So, um, you know, I just keep on moving forward. I don't think too much of the future. I let destiny take its path. And uh, kind of guide me on its on its way, and I, I kind of find it as I as I see it. Instead of planning, I'm not a big planner. I'm not sure if that's a good thing, but I'm not a big planner. I believe in you know everything is uh, everything is for a reason. Like attracts like, and eventually you just get there. You know, um, <clears throat> you create your own why, of course. Uh, and I see you know it, you know I always come back to comedy, and but comedy always takes me other places. Like right now, uh, I'm getting involved in customer service. I, I want I, I'm really saddened, you know, to see a lot of comedians out there uh, in their 50s and 60s and 40s, even that are still out there in the grind on the road, living out of small, cheap hotels and and uh, comedy condos and can't get a gig. Comedy clubs are closing. Venues aren't there. Too many restrictions. The cancel culture is trying to trying to take over, which they won't. And um, I think what comedians need to do is is divert and use their powers and their talents in other ways. And I believe the other ways they can do that is in customer service, in the retail world, in the business world, in the sales world, to, to actually um, you know, make people laugh and happy and, 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 and companies successful. You know, comedians, we have a very powerful mouth and mind. And uh, we can make that work in companies. They'll pay good money, but you must train yourself on the front end and of course, in the customer service world, to uh, to get that way. And I'm looking to start a, a little um, course teaching comedians and other people how to close deals, customer service, and how to use your talent in other ways other than just the stage. Absolutely, and sales, you know, is always going to be there. Customer service is always going to be there. And when you have a powerful <clears throat> A voice like yourself, you know, and a, and a feel good voice, you're a great leader. You can transition to be a great leader because you know how to utilize words and motivation to move people in the right direction, you know, right. and, and I, I'm glad to see that you're doing that. And watching your career through LinkedIn, you know, 
I can see, I can just see the little snippets of what you're doing and where you're trying to go with that. And if you would expound a little bit about, upon that, where are you trying to go with this? Like, what's, what's the next six months, a year look like for you? I would say the next six months, I'm going to focus on putting a, uh, a, a, a blueprint together on my business that I'm starting, that I'm launching through my, my company called Blue Light Talent. Um, and uh, I'm going to, I actually signed up for StreamYard. I'm going to get involved in doing live stream on my other podcast, Don't Eat All the Meatballs, uh, which is a comedy podcast. And then I'm going to launch my new podcast called Retail Unmasked, which is about the retail business behind the scenes. But it's not an expose. It's not, we're not exploiting it. It's just kind of hanging out in the break room, in other words, and talking about, I'm going to have other people on from the retail world uh, in food and beverage, um, big box stores to talk about what it's like. So that, so the people can see what it's really like behind the scenes. In, in a very positive way. And I'm going to start teaching uh, people how to close deals. I was a, When I was in Los Angeles for many years, before I made it as a comedian, I, um, I would work in, um, I hate to say the word boiler rooms, but I'd work in boiler rooms and I would develop techniques to, to sell. So I was teaching people how to close deals. I was in Vegas teaching people how to close deals. I was in Los Angeles teaching people how to close deals, how to use comedy as a technique to get to the point, to get to the bottom line to get to the card and um, you know, how do you, how to, how to, how to do it gracefully. So I'll be doing a lot of um, teaching I'm looking at in customer service and uh, in, in closing deals. And I want to get comedians involved in the world of customer service and, and utilize their talent. I was talking to a comedian the other day and I won't mention his name. And he was sad. He was like, I can't get work. I'm, you know, I'm 60 years old. I can't get work. I'm like, but you're one of the funniest guys out there. He goes, yeah, but nobody wants to book me. I can't put butts in seats. And I'm like, well, you know, have you ever thought about using it and getting involved in customer service and in the retail world to use your talent and, uh, and, and make other companies successful? And he thought it was a great idea. And that kind of lit a spark in my, my head saying, you know, I can do this. Absolutely. And, you know, you just made me think about this, but in my, in my industry, <laughs> maintenance veteran medical, uh, I have to train so many people on so many different things. But through your journey, people who helped you get to where you are. We all have to work together. And if people would recognize that we're all connected and just lift each other up, we'd all be so much further along, you know? And I teach that in my company. I know you feel the same way. You've had some people lift you up, correct? I agree. And I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I really feel uh, one of the worst things in the world for anyone is to get stuck, to get stuck in a position and not know how to get out of it and only rely on that one thing that you know how to do for the rest of your life. The, you, you, you know, we're only using 10% of our capacity, of our, of our talents, of our, our brain capacity. Um, if you know how to tap into at least another 5%, can you imagine where you can go? I mean, it, it's really, you know, you look at a lot of these stars and a lot of comedians and singers and they just got stuck and they don't know what to do, you know, it's, and, and, and they have no idea the talent that they can bring in other, other parts of the world uh, to other companies, to companies. There are companies out there that, that, want people like what I do, you know, to come in the room and motivate them to get more sales, to be a lead, to show, to teach leadership, how to, to, um, be, have a, to, to create a positive environment, to create great morale, to motivate the company to go out there and, you know, not just hurrah, hurrah, but there's a technique. It's psychological, a psychological approach and using comedy and psychology together to get to, uh, from A to B. Amen on that. You know, it, it's just a lot of folks are born natural business folks and they know how to do <clears> the <throat> business side of things. But you're right. The, the, cult, the culture of your business is really what makes your business. And I've seen this happen before in, in some different uh, companies that I've been involved with. You know, a bad culture comes in and the whole company just tanks and, and there's no morale. It's just like you said, blah. And, and blah. that is a bad feeling when you're stuck in something and you can't grow. So, um, with that, with that being said, uh, your your future looks bright on the business side of things. Do you have anything going on with comedy? You got any, you know, shows coming up? Anything you're going to do with that? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm going to do some stuff. I'm not looking to tour too much anymore. I'm tired of it. Um, you know, I, I I'm not looking because to me, when you're on the road and you're touring and you're doing cruise ships as a comedian, it's again, it, it even though you're moving, you're stuck, and that world is done. I, I yes, I will perform. There are certain theaters I might go back to. Uh, private venues, uh, corporate shows, 
Uh, I got a lot of Zoom calls. I do a lot of Zoom shows, a lot of happy hours with Michael Wheels Parisi, uh, where the office comp the company will 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 uh, hire me to come in. And uh, especially during pandemic, I did a lot of them during pandemic. Actually, it was happy hour with Michael Wheels Parisi, where I would go into their office and everybody would be home and we do a Zoom call and I would host. I would host it. We had bourbon tastings. We'd have just a regular happy hour and discussion, and I would kind of guide the discussion on and and keep the flow going, you know. And everybody would be in their homes, you know, remotely, and we'd have four or five hundred people there. It was great, great, fantastic. Those shows were great. I want to continue doing that. I think even without pandemic, that could be something that would be fun. Uh, and of course, I will be performing. And my and of course, my Don't Eat All the Meatballs podcast is starting to really blow up, and I'm getting involved in that. And I want to do more things with with the comedy podcast world. I want to start maybe producing uh, there. We, we'll see. But uh, my show is starting. We're right now in the one top 150 comedy podcasts in the world, and we're growing. We're not at Rogan style yet, but we hopefully we'll be getting there soon. You know, Everybody's chasing Rogan, you know, but uh, it truthfully is a great way, and it's still kind of the only way that you can still be yourself. It's like they'll let you be yourself on voice, but when you start putting video with it, uh, they want to clamp that down because it gets in their minds, you know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. It it's and powerful. It is powerful, and the, the freedom, you know, that we have – as Americans, we, we've got to keep it. We've got to keep fighting for our freedom. We've got to keep fighting for freedom of speech and freedom of being a comedian or being whatever you want to be, but just be let let folks do it because we don't want to be robots. Just like painting someone into a corner in a job, you can paint humans into a corner of being a human and then we're all miserable. Absolutely. Once you change um, the freedom part of, the, of, of, of speech and, and what you can do and the choices we have in life, we might as well just change the name of the country at this point. Because that's where things get, you know, we were built on freedom. And if there are people out there right now fighting for it every day. And uh, there are people out there against it. And, you know, we're America and we're always going to be a free country, no matter what people think. And uh, there are people out there like Joe and myself and other, other, other uh, podcasters and comedians, uh, Dave Chappelle. Um, you know, we all talk. And, you know, it's, and we're never going to stop what we're doing. And the cancel culture... Um, they don't even realize that we've canceled them. I canceled the cancel culture. I don't allow them in my show. I don't, I don't allow them to listen to my show. I don't want them showing up. I can care less about them. They they mean nothing to me. They are absolutely zero in my world. I hope they know that. Um, and just don't show up. I don't want them. And, and, and we all feel that way. So the cancel culture will cancel themselves out um, before you know it. You won't even hear about them anymore. But um, you know, like like Joey, like Joey Rogan, you know, you, you know, I know Joe for years. Him and I were, were were basically, you know, broke together in Los Angeles back in the early '90s. We would be hanging out at his house in Studio City. Joe never knew this was going to happen. Joe never thought that he would be the number one podcast in the world. Uh, we used to drive to La Jolla together, the San Diego and La Jolla, to do shows together in his Acura Legend, you know. <laughs> and he picked me up at my house in Hollywood, and uh, it was. It was the stupidest thing. We were idiots. Comedians are morons when it comes to that. We're not trying to change the world. Wait, don't believe me. Why would you believe me? I'm a comic. You know, don't take what I say serious, but listen to the people that I'm bringing onto my show. These are experts. You know, um, you are in your industry, right? But you brought on an expert, a comedian today to talk about this because you trust the comic. So I would bring you onto my show because I trust what you do. You know, and you we're bringing each other on to shows to, to discuss opinions and how we feel. Why would you cancel our opinions out? Why? Who who made you boss? Like they said years ago, who died and made you boss? Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> and look, you know why they put a switch on and off on a TV? Because you can right. just turn it on and off. That's you right. Know? So That's just right. turn it off if you don't like it, you know. But uh, we are we're all moving in the right track. I believe this year, you know, we're going to. I think everybody's seeing everything. You can see that. And everybody's just moving forward and trying to get back on track and to do uh, my mon my mantra is to do the right thing every day. You never have to worry about your pay. And that's a fact, you know, that's right. and, and as long as you keep grinding and I see you grinding, I love your story. And I just Thank am you. so thankful that you took some time here to talk with, uh, with me and all the people that watch, watch my podcast. You know yeah. what, what I'm doing here at Maintenance Veteran Medical, I help people win federal contracts and I bring the highest quality uh, products to the VA and to the DOD. I, I'm an amputee veteran. I was in I was in the VA and I started seeing all these cheap products and I could see that 
people were buying stuff just to be buying it. They wasn't looking at what they're really buying. They're spending that dollar, but they wasn't looking at what they were spending the dollar on. So right. I'm just here to make aware that you can spend the same dollar and get a much better product, you know, through, through maintenance veteran medical. And that's, that's my story. And I'm trying to make sure the veterans know that, that there's, there's someone out here fighting to bring them higher quality products. And, you know, I really appreciate and thank you for your service. Without people like yourself, these are the true heroes of the world going out there and sacrificing your lives to make this country free. So you should absolutely fight for that every day. And in the position that you're in now, you can still fight for it every day. And now you have the media on your side. You can influence people. You have the uh, you have the most powerful uh, you have the most powerful tool in the world right in your in your hand every day. And that's our phones and our video and, and things like StreamYard to be able to do that. So we're still fighting the fight. And, you know, I really appreciate what you've done for us. And, uh, and, and, and of course, all the veterans in the world. My father was a World War II veteran, Purple Heart uh, recipient. And, uh, you know, he passed since, you know, but, you know, I, I think about it all the time. I had my, my uncle was a fighter pilot in World War II. I mean, and it goes on and on. And, um, Keep on fighting, man. Just we'll keep, keep on fighting. We will keep grinding. So I want to ask you, Michael, do you have anything that's been in your mind, a story, anything you'd like to tell to our, our viewers here today, just something where people will have to say, you know what? I've got to go to that Manus Veteran Medical video and pull up Michael Parisi <laughs> and, and, and find out what he said. Is there anything that you would like to talk about uh, here as we wrap this up? Well, I can give you, first of all, I want to ask you a question. Sure. Uh, where, I know you have a backdrop there. Where is that backdrop? Does it tell you where it is? Uh, you know what? Uh, I just pulled it off of Google. I know that you probably played there because I think yeah. it's linked to uh, your name. Okay, because it looks like a very, uh, it looks like somewhere I've been before, a stage I performed at. So I think it's, it's very funny that you're there and I'm here. <laughs> Um, I, look, I didn't want to do all the copyrighted photos of you. So I was just like, I'm taking a place where he's been before. No, I love it. Um, well, I'll give you a motivational story. I, I, I was, uh, I was, uh, you know, in LA, I moved out there in 1990 and, um, you know, I was, I was, I was grinding every night at the comedy store, the world famous comedy store on the sunset. And I'm, you know, of course, you know, that's my, my home when I'm in LA, but, uh, when I got married and I, I was, uh, <clears throat> and I'm going to be very frank with the story. So when I got married, I decided, you know, I don't know if I can do this. You know, I, I have a, a baby on the way, you know, my wife and I were, were, uh, you know, going to be new parents. And I'm like, I can't go on the road every night. I can't, I can't do this. There's no life to live. I'm a very intelligent man. I could figure it out. Uh, I'll do something else, you know, and I'll still, I'll still keep comedy in my world, but I got to figure it out. So I was in Miami. And I was at a hotel in Miami. I was performing at the Miami Improv. And uh, to be quite frank with, you, frank with you, I was I was smoking marijuana a little bit that night. And I just happened to be, you know, smoking a joint. And um, and I'm saying to myself, what am I going to do? And as you know, if you've ever smoked it before, you get I get I get creative. Okay, it makes me creative. So I came up with an idea, and I said, I'm going to sell, <laughs> I'm going to sell cannolis. I'm going to sell cannolis. And I'm going to mail order them to people because I make the best cannoli in the world. And I'm going to call the company Cannoli Kings. And I'm going to mail order cannolis all over the country and different varieties and different flavors. And uh, and I'm going to hit the celebrity market in L.A. And I'm going to do it. So I went out back to L.A. and I bought the name CannoliKings.com. $10 investment. Um, and I started advertising, if you remember, on Craigslist back then, you know. And everybody was starting to buy my cannolis. I'm like, this is really – I had no idea this was starting to take off. I was making like three, 400 a day. And then I said, well, now I'm being an executive chef. I'm going to get into the catering world. So I told my wife, I'm like, let's get into the catering world. And um, I opened up a catering company called Cannoli Kings Catering out of a one-bedroom apartment in West Hollywood, California. And literally, I was I was doing office parties every day. You know, people would hire us to come in and do offices. And we would put up a little buffet and a whole deal, and all the people would, would eat my food. And I would cook it out of my kitchen under this one-bedroom apartment in Los Angeles. And then um, within three years, I became the number one catering company in Los Angeles. And I went from a one-bedroom apartment to a 14,000-square-foot kitchen in North Hollywood, uh, servicing probably 85% of my of the celebrities out there and becoming of L.A.'s number one catering company, um, the People's Choice, uh, through Fox and through City Search. So that just launched my catering company, and I just took it to another whole level. But what I'm trying to get to is that you can do anything you want to do as long as you refocus and you reformat and recharge your brain and think differently, right? And use a talent that you have, which was of course food, that and bring it and bring it into the world and say, I'm gonna focus on this now. I'm gonna make this successful and no one's gonna stop me. 
and I'm going to become big and I'm going to become great because of it. And that's what I did. And, um, and then I, and then of course I moved on from that and did other things, but that's my story of, of, of uh, how you can go from zero to a hundred miles an hour on a $10 domain name. Hey, I, I feel you. I know exactly. I kind of know exactly what you're talking about. We started Maintenance Veteran Medical in 200 square feet, and last year uh, was just absolutely amazing. In three years, and you're right. The thing is, the focus, the drive, and just saying I'm not going to fail. And I appreciate that story because you know a lot of things I do is try to motivate people to start their own business. You know, go out there, do it, get start federal contracting. I try to push them to do it, and they're so scared. You know, but you're right. It really does come down to buying the domain domain name and just doing it you know just go for it focusing on the name if you look at the name in your head you keep on looking at it things will pop in your head it's focusing on that not focusing on anything but that name and then before you know it the name becomes a reality I love the Cannoli Kings. It sounds great. I mean, you know, uh, in the movie The Dirt, Motley Crue, you know, uh, they say shitty band name, shitty band. It That's right. really does matter in business. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it really I love does. What you're, I love what you're doing too, man. And by the way, I don't smoke weed every night either anymore. I'm just like, <laughs> just want to make that disclaimer. That was a, that was in 19, uh, that was in 2001. <laughs> Well, look, Michael, since then, think about it now. Uh, they know now that marijuana does help in certain cases. Um, and we are a lot of the, the people that did marijuana back then knew it. They just didn't want to let it go yet. But now That's they right. know. And, and even in the VA, I, w I don't mind bringing marijuana products to the VA because the veterans say they help. It helps them. And if it's legalized, I'm down. I'm down with anything that can help. A I am 100 percent. I'm 100 percent on, on you with that. I'm a, I'm a complete activist for that. Uh, even in Los Angeles, I was I had a medical card uh, back when when they were before you can even get them. You know, they were they not even popular. And I believe in it 100 percent. And I feel that people can use uh, medical cannabis for the right reasons. It can help people with psychological problems. Uh, it can with with a lot of issues in your in your body. It's just a fabulous. If you're doing that, that's fabulous. I really appreciate that. And I'm not against it at all. If we, you know, and um, I would smoke right now with you if we were together. I have no problem with it. <laughs> well, well, the thing, the only thing I don't like is, uh, look, me and you both spend a lot of time in Vegas. I, I don't like that. It's like they pump it out of the bushes in Vegas, you know, right. like everywhere you want the smell. But uh, it, it is what it is. You know, it's just uh, I am definitely pushing for that for the veterans, though. And, and the VA is actually listening to folks now. The doctors in the VA are listening and they're saying, OK, we'll do this type of can, uh, cannabis or any type of pills or edibles, you know, and, and they're they're really listening. So change is happening with the VA. That's good. And where do you see the VA going? And uh, are, they, are they protecting um, all the veterans that are here or, or are they I, I keep on hearing that a lot of people are getting ignored still? I I. I can tell you this. It's getting better. Here's the problem with the VA. They don't have anybody to work. They're rotating people over so fast. People that I sell a product to this week has already quit and went on somewhere else. The 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 labor shortage is real in the world in every single sector, and they're trying to fix that. And, you know, I'm bringing solutions to, to fix that as well. But uh, people just need to want to go back to work, in my opinion. what what? How can somebody not want to work? I, I mean, I understand maybe not working, you know, 50 hours, I mean, 70 hours a week, but, you know, just a normal job, I, I'm, it makes me feel better. I don't know about you. I want to be doing something. I agree. And I, have, I think it has a lot to do with our genre. Uh, we believe in the workforce. And I think what I, I've come up with in my head about the young people not wanting to work today as much, uh, with the exception of a lot of young people, of course, that are working, but there are the ones that don't. And I contributed to um, uh, the side hustle. Uh, if you go on TikTok, there's side hustles everywhere. You can make, you know, a thousand dollars a day if you're if you're if you're a smart kid. And there are things you can do. And there are people that are video gamers that can make three, four thousand a month. They get sponsorship. So to go out there and hustle in retail or hustle anywhere anymore, it's very hard to find the young generation doing that because of the side hustles. There are just so many of them out there that they're making money, not even leaving their house, and they're making money from their phones, and they're making money in cryptocurrency. And they're making money so many different places. Are they going to go get a job at Target? I don't think so. No. So that, I, I really find that the side hustle being a positive thing could also be a negative thing. Agreed. I, I'm all down. If you're trying, if your side hustle is your job, crypto is your job, and you're going to watch it or whatever you want to do, I'm down with that. I'm just not down with people that just don't want to work in general. Lazy want, people. Yeah, lazy people. I want people to hustle and, and get that feeling of pride back. We need that back, and yes. we, we're going to we're going to get through this. You know, as far as the the sickness goes, I think people has realized that we can't stop it. 
you know, maybe they can one day, but this is so fresh. You know, it's going to hit people the way it's going to hit. My wife was in the hospital for nine days. Uh, some people make it, some people don't, but yeah. we've got to grind forward, you know, yeah. as, a, as a country. So, yeah. um, you know, getting on that uh, is a whole nother topic. But, um, Michael, I just want to say again, thank you. Uh, is there any, uh, I like to give my, my guests the last word, last word for you. What, anything else you well, like? I, I really enjoy doing your show today, Jonathan. I'll tell you the truth. Yeah, I think you're onto a great thing here. I appreciate what you're doing. I see what you're doing out there and uh, keep doing that. I, uh, if you want to see a different side of me, people, who are, whoever's watching the show, if you want to see a different side of me or hear a different side of me, you can YouTube um, Wheels P is my YouTube channel, or you can just Google Michael Wheels Parisi. And if you want to listen to my podcast, Don't Eat All the Meatballs, it's a comedy podcast. Don't be offended. It's what I do. And uh, you can listen to that as well. And uh, don't eat all the meatballs. We're all over iTunes, Pandora, Spotify. And just keep on um, exercising your freedom of speech. And I appreciate what you're doing. And that's it, really. And I, I thanks for having me on. Been Thank you. And, and all of his details is down below. Just click on the YouTube links and just check them out. Let them roll and enjoy it and, and sit back and relax and laugh your butt off. So, Michael, you have a wonderful day. And I will holler at you later, okay? Sounds good. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you so much. Everyone, that was Michael Wills Parisi and, you know, uh, another great person. He, he didn't have to do that today, but he took his time to, to tell his story and what's going on. And I hope you listen to that. You know, whenever you get to meet somebody who's been around the world, take some time, uh, listen to them, and you never know when they're going to come back uh, to, to meet you again and have a conversation. So I hope, hope everyone has a wonderful day today, and I will holler at y'all later. The One Leg Bandit is out.